Hi everyone, I'm Nipath X, but you're gonna call me Nikolai, and today it's gonna be you, me, Brian Gertz, and the stage of Project Valhalla! <laughs> Brian is the oh uh, Brian is the lead of Project Valhalla, which aims to overcome Java's original sin, splitting the type system into primitives and reference types. Brian and I talked about all things Valhalla, unifying the type system, expanding generics, current work in Java enhancement proposals 401 and 402, the project timeline, and more. Uh, speaking of the Jeps, it's helpful to have read them before watching the conversation. They're linked in the description. Down there, you'll also find timestamps to various parts of the conversation, so you can jump to what interests you most. Ready? Then let's dive right in! Welcome, Brian. Thank you for being here. I already to told our audience that I bypassed all official Oracle channels when doing this, so <laughs> you're here in your free time and not in your work time, so I really appreciate that. Um, huh? If you have to run early, just let us know. No, no worries. Um, I think after the last couple of years... So when Valhalla started, it was really hot new, so the hot new stuff. And then uh, Amber kind of took a little bit of the limelight, I think, because Limer, Amber was just you know more agile. It was quicker to deliver stuff. And I'm not sure whether Valhalla actually took a backseat. But also, like it's a larger project that doesn't like lend itself to like small incremental releases. So uh, I think it was a little bit out of out of sight, maybe. Uh, but I th it feels with Jeps, what 401 and 402, if I got my numbers right, it came back strong. So I want to talk. Let's talk about the, uh, Valhalla uh, first, or maybe just Valhalla. That's fine with me as well. Um, and I want to ask you the same thing that I asked the other two guys who's been who have been here before, which is. Mainly, I want to talk about uh, what current what challenges are currently and where you're going, what you're seeing, what happened recently, what's going to happen next. But I think it makes more sense to have that conversation in the bracket of where do we start or where did we start rather, and where do we want to go. So I think like basically have like the problem statement of Valhalla, and then also if everything would just go perfect, what would the end result be, and then we can see like where we are at. So that mm -hmm. maybe we can right. start with that. Yeah, so, so, so you know, I, I think Valhalla is really, you know, it's a good example of uh, the challenges of decade scale engineering uh, because it started with a uh, almost impossibly bold, you know, uh, goal. Uh, and the need for it kind of grew out of um, a lot of the work that we did in Java 8 with Lambdas. Right. So, you know, we built the, um, you know, built, built the Java Util stream library as part of, of Lambda. And there was a reason that we did streams at the same time we did Lambda, which was it, we knew that it was impractical to design the language features in the absence of using them in anger. Um, and so we felt the need to build at least one industrial strength library that was designed from, for the, from the ground up for Lambdas and streams was you know, a good candidate. Um, and that, you know, fed back valuable insight into the language design process. Uh, but it also exposed the cracks in the foundation uh, in a way that was harder to ignore than it was previously, right? So the original sin of Java is primitives and references. And these two kinds of types are different in every way. Right. Uh, one of them is stored indirectly. One of them is stored directly. One of them is nullable. One of them is not nullable. One of them is extensible by the user. One of them isn't. Right. So different. If you imagine like a nine dimensional space for your type system, <laughs> these two things occupy diametrically opposed corners of, 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 of this space. And so, you know, this was a necessary evil in 1995 because we didn't know how to do better back then. Um, and it was important that arithmetic actually be fast in Java, otherwise no one would take it seriously. So uh, we came by this problem honestly. It got worse when we did generics, because when we did generics in Java 5, uh, not only did you have this bipartite type system, but it, the, 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 the gap between primitives and references um, you know, w w was... Uh, followed its way in, into the generic type system. So you could only generify over reference types and not over primitive types. Um, and when we did lambdas, the gap got bigger again uh, because you, know, you wanted to define functional interfaces like function and predicate and what have you, but you know, they, because they were generic interfaces, 
they don't play nicely with primitives. And so, you know, that led to this explosion of horrible hand specialized, you know, into long function, et cetera. And the, um, uh, the stream library, you know, if you, you know, we have, uh, hand specialized versions like in stream and long stream and double stream. And this again was a necessary evil because, uh, we wanted people to be able to take a stream of integers and sum them up without having to, uh, to use reduce. And we wanted the performance to be good. And so that meant we had to hand specialize in stream. And that in turn meant we had to hand specialize a lot of the functional interfaces. And this made, this made it really clear that, you know, this original sin had, you know, expanded and blossomed to a scale that was going to make it difficult to get the real benefit out of the lambdas that we just added to the language. So, you know, th th this is sort of where we realized that something like Valhalla was was just necessary. Uh, Brian, Brian, um, quick question. Brian, quick yeah. question. Um, how many people quit before you decided that you're not going to implement float stream? and to float function because you have int and long and double but float is an absolute I, I guess i know why but it's really funny that it felt like somebody was like fuck it, i'm not gonna do that I'd rather quit before doing that again <laughs> i was like okay we don't need the fourth one then <laughs> I, I mean it, it wasn't i mean it wasn't that hard it wouldn't have been that hard to implement the one that everyone asked for is char stream because they want to turn a string into a char stream uh, but it seemed silly to have you know Uh, eight hand specialized versions, even though, you know, we had figured out how to you know, do most of it with, you know, with, with way less than four times or eight times the work. But it also, even having more than one was this huge constraint in the design of the library. Uh, because, uh, you know, the, the, the way a stream is represented internally when it's being set up is it's basically a linked list of um, of nodes that describe what is this stage doing. And when each of those nodes can be of a different type, because one of them might be a stream of ints and one of them might be a stream of strings in the same stream, stream pipeline, this created some very difficult and unpleasant uh, challenges for the implementation. Not that the users see that in the API, but that meant that certain implementation techniques were closed off to us. So it was, you know, painful from a footprint perspective that the library was much bigger and therefore had much larger testing surface. Uh, it was annoying from a cut and paste perspective. Um, and it, you know, it, it put constraints on the implementers, right? So this was very clearly a big problem. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and a problem that was not getting smaller, it was a problem that was getting bigger. And so, You know, the inspiration for Valhalla, uh, you know, came from that environment where we realized you need to be able to abstract over all the types uniformly. Otherwise, you know, it, it, it gets unpleasant very quickly, you know, and we were lucky that, um, you know, stream was only a one dimensional aggregate. Right. I mean, what happens <laughs> if, you know, we we had something that was more like a map stream. Right. Uh, and yeah, so. It, it was clear we needed to do something, but we didn't really understand the problem at first. I mean, we knew that inline representation of user-defined aggregates was an essential feature. We knew that uh, this had to, that this layout flattening had to work all the way through generics because otherwise you you would have you would have a have to choose between abstraction and performance again. But you know, we didn't really understand what all the problems were. And so we set out to building a number of prototypes and we learned from each one of them. And, you know, as as the project evolved, we realized that it, even though our initial motivation came from performance about eliminating the indirections, uh, the, the real benefit is going to come from unifying the type system and for getting rid of that original sin. Uh, and in the first go around for Valhalla, it is probably the case that, you know, we're not going to be able to do everything at once. And so we'll, uh, you know, there will be some amount of time between the time that we expand the range of generics and the time that we are able to actually specialize generics all the way down. And 
you know, almost all the problems that we've run into in Valhalla have been about migration compatibility. How do we do this in a way that existing generic code can continue to work just like generics faced when we did generics in five? How do we allow existing code to be generified without throwing it out? And that's where all the challenge comes from. Okay, um, I I'm sorry I have to do this. But we have this thing on Twitch where you can give people rewards oh. when they watch long enough. And I decided for no okay. particular reason to let people to pick headwear for me. Uh, okay. So please don't think less of me because of this. But there you go. Okay. There's one viewer who's been... So if you watch a Twitch stream, you get these, these imaginary points. It's like it's like answer on Stack Overflow, but you don't have to do anything. Well, actually, okay. if you participate in chat, you get more of them. And um, so people were like wanting me to look like a fool last time we talked, but they didn't have enough of these points. So they've been saving up for a year waiting for this. <laughs> so I couldn't, like, I can't just not do this either. But once again, it, it doesn't look much more ridiculous than the hair, really. So, okay. Um, um, okay, so the goal is, uh, you now described the, uh, the bring the type system together um, with, uh, across primitives and, you know, self, not, not just primitives and classes, but also our own inline classes. So we can finally have all the unsigned ins and 2D points and complex numbers that we ever right. dreamed of. Um, so, and you also mentioned that you did a couple of prototypes and now that there are Japs, I mean, we don't know which versions they will target eventually, but you don't do a Jap, I guess, when it's like three years in the future and nobody knows what's going to happen. So I feel that there being Japs points towards that the first things are going to come at some point in the close future. So yeah. what, what is that what you exactly, because, I mean, when the Jap is there, I guess you already pre know pretty well what exactly you're doing targeting that Jap. So um, can you quickly go over the current two Japs and what what you're what you're like currently working on? What what's what what is it? What it is that you and your team spend time, uh, you know, thinking about and implementing at the moment? Yeah, yeah. So so the, there's actually uh, three Japs that represent the the first phase, um, and uh, uh, they are the first one is I think that's four four one four zero two. Um, the the first one is simply about primitive classes, being able to declare a primitive class. So I can declare a primitive class, the, um, its, its layout gets flattened into other objects and, and arrays, and you know, defining all the semantics of uh, how do method calls work, and how do field access work, and how do the bytecodes get field and put field work, and had, you know, uh, lots of, you know, from a user perspective, uh, Jeff, the Jeff 401 is basically about being able to say primitive class and getting the semantics and performance that you expect from it. Uh, JEP 402 is about rehabilitating boxing. Um, and so uh, one, of the, uh, one, one of the sort of inspirational challenges that, uh, that, that, you know, that we've risen to in Valhalla was we had a, a very early on in the process, we had um, a, a, a design meeting that was held uh, the, at the same week as the JVM Language Summit. So since so many you know, experts were in town for JVM Language Summit, later in the week we had some design meetings and you know, people were free to join them. And uh, Kevin Barillion from Google uh, looked at the initial write-up that we went through uh, about where we wanted the project to go. And, and, and he, he kind of stood up and said, it's like, okay, so the thing that's worst about Java is the, um, the bipartite type system you know, the references and primitives, like, please don't tell me that, in you know, that, that Valhalla is going to give us a type system split in three and not two. <laughs> and like, you know, that was a pretty strong challenge, but he was right. And we spent like the next year or two, like trying to convince ourselves that what we were doing was not um, cutting the world in, in, in three, even though it was. So there was a certain amount of wishful thinking that we had to get through before we could you know, get to the other side. Uh, but what JEP 402 is about, um, about satisfying that, that, you know, that wish, which is, um, you know, right now we have references and primitives, uh, and we are swapping that bipartite view for a slightly different bipartite view, which is you have identity classes and primitive classes and the uh and and what we want to do is take the existing pairs of types into an integer or you know char and, and character um and turn those into just uh <laughs> being a primitive class and its reference projection 
Um, and ob- obviously, you know, because there's support built into the JVM, it's not going to just be that. But we want to make it as close as possible. So we want to take the rec classes like integer and character and turn them into like honest to God primitive classes and say that integer is the ref projection of int and and such. And so that's what JEP402 is about, is about rewriting the, uh, boxing so that it fits into the story of primitive classes. And that's one of those things that was among the hardest things to do uh, because there were so many legacy constraints. And, you know, uh, it, it, it's a good example of winning looks like uh, when people see the answer, they say, well, what took so long, <laughs> right? So you read JEP402 and it sounds pretty reasonable. And like, you know, there are a few, a few compromises and incompatibilities which we're able to write off. Like right now you can synchronize on a boxed integer. In the future, you won't be able to because it's a value type and people who write code like that can stop writing code like that. And so we were willing to spend our very limited incompatibility budget on things like that in order to get the unification we were looking for. The, uh, the third JEP, which is not yet in the, the same state as the first two, but kind of goes with these first two, is the one that we're calling universal type variables. And that is about the semantics of generics, uh, of erased generics, the generics we have now, uh, and how they play with primitive classes. And, you know, the, right now it, it, in the language, there are a number of places where boxing shows up in the, uh, in the JLS. So, for example, there are rules about preferring a um, method invocation with no boxing conversions over one with boxing conversions when you do overload selection. Uh, for, or if you look at the rules about um, solving constraints and in type inference, if one of the constraints has a primitive in it, it very quickly gets promoted to its corresponding wrapper. Um, and so we need to you know, find all those places in the language uh, where it, um, it gives meaning to, to boxing and sort of tease apart the considerations so that it, you know, it, it, it's more uniform. Um, and and that's, that goes under the heading universal type variables. Uh, and that, that that one is interesting because the premise of universal type variables is um, if I have a generic class, class foo of T, I don't have to say T could be a primitive class. It's just any type. Originally, in the first prototype, we picked, you know, there was an opt-in syntax for here's a plain old erase generic, here's a newfangled specializable generic. And while that's the, in that prototype, it was simpler to do it that way, it created migration compatibility challenges for users who are migrating classes from old to new. So if there isn't an old and a new, then you don't have the migration challenge. We originally thought we were never going to be able to get there, but over time we figured out you can get there. And so that's that's what that third jet is. Okay, but just like, but um, so one thing I want to add to the second jet, by the way, to jet four hundred two, which turns, uh, um, which turns basically int and integer into uh, two different, you know, ends of the same type, namely the the, the primitive inline one and the reference one. Um, right. I did correct understand that correctly, right? That I will then be able to call methods on int, so I can say forty two dot two string. Yes. So that's pretty cool because, well, I'm not sure, two strings actually longer than the other solution, but do you know how us, you know, peasants uh, turn an integer into a string when we have to? We, you, you call integer dot two string and you pass it, pass it in. No, I do plus the empty string, of course. Oh, okay. All right. That, that, that's, that's uglier, but, but, but shorter. Yeah. yeah. But calling just the integer dot two string is just, I think it's a great middle ground. Um, but then also, well, it, it, it gets us to everything as an object, right? Exactly, we, yeah. we, we, there's no longer any value that's not an object. Yeah. Except maybe null. No, I guess null is not, a, not an object. Oh, it's yeah. It's an object. Yeah, yeah. We, did, we, thought, we talked about talking about null at some point in more detail. Uh, let's see whether we can do that. Um, but you're right. So that's one interesting thing. And then you said that JEP402 looks pretty straightforward. And I think it is very straightforward. And I would also almost say it's almost easy until it hits the point of, I think, reference preferring primitive classes, but what is apparently there for, for backwards compatibility, right? And maybe there are even yes. some cases where you need it in practice, but that's when I think it's like, it feels, it feels a little bit like Inception then. You're like, okay, I got the first level and then 
Um, but still, I, well, I'm not complaining at all, right? It's still impressive that we got that far uh, even. So I think that's actually the only part of the Jeff where I feel it's not just easy reading. That's where you actually have to start thinking about what you read. And that it's mostly like, oh great, I can create a complex point now and it can be inlined and that's amazing and it can be boxed. It's not called that anymore, I guess. But you know, like that can happen as well. Um, but yeah, when we talk about reference preferring primitive types, then it gets a bit more complicated how to d differentiate the two. So there are classes that people wish had been written as primitive classes, but of course they couldn't because primitive classes didn't exist at the time they were written, and the poster child there is optional. So, you know, so we could have made the thing simpler and said, yeah, optional just loses. And that might actually be an acceptable choice, but a lot of people would be very sad about that. Um, and so, you know, the, the, um, the compromise that we made uh, is, okay, there will be some classes where, um, you know, the good name, in general, you want the good name to go to the, the desirable memory characteristics. You say primitive class point, you want point to mean the uh, flattened value projection, not the indirect reference projection. Um, but for these old classes, you want the opposite. So you want when someone says optional, they mean they want optional to mean what it meant when optional was written. Uh, and so it's not a perfect solution in that it exposes the fact that this is a migrated class uh, to its clients, but it has the benefit that the cost of migration is paid for by the classes being migrated as opposed to by the whole system. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, people ask, why couldn't you write a new optional class, you know, optional two or whatever, you know, we could have a big bike shed to, to name it, all the names are terrible. Um, but the problem is not optional. The problem is optional is already in all of our APIs. It's in streams and it's, you know, and, and so now there's this big migration problem from old optional to new optional that no one wants to do. And so the three choices, you know, are you can't migrate it. People will, will complain. Uh, there's a hard migration where you have to do a lot of work. Um, people won't like that or make the language more complicated and offer a way to uh, migrate classes compatibly, but with some extra garbage in, in, the, in their code, you know, that, that is the, you know, the, the evidence of the migration. And so we picked option three tentatively, we could change our minds, um, but that's what, that's what that's about. Okay. Yeah, and I guess it's not just option, right? I mean, it's not the only class out there that, that, uh, that wants to be in wants to be a value but isn't i guess that specifically libraries probably have tons of those around that they can right. just you know i mean they of course they have more freedom than uh, than the jdk to just say like okay we bump a major version and do everything new but and recompile the world yeah exactly they, they have that well, but even they might take the the approach of be like okay let's you know let's do this slowly or not at all so yeah i'm um, about the third tip about um uh, generics i'm not sure i quite understood what exactly that's gonna do so the, the, i think the goal in the end is array list of integer will be backed by an int array is that already it, it, it or is that still another step so in 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 the in the long term view when we all go to valhalla um <laughs> you'll be able to say array list of int and that will really be backed by an int array mm -hmm. So you'll be able to say int, that int will flow all the way into the representation of array list. And you know, when it goes to create an array, it creates an array of, of ints rather than integers, um, and it's all good. So that's where we want to get to. In the meantime, we could say, well, you can't say array list of int, you can only say array list of integer. That's the situation we're in now, but then you have the whole world of int stream and, and, and all of that. So what we want is to create a middle ground where you can say array list of int today or array list of points, um, and you get all the semantics that you would get in that future world, but temporarily between now and then you pay a boxing penalty. Mm -hmm. So you say array list of int and you really get the runtime behavior of array list of integer and everyone complains and says, oh, you just pulled a big switcheroo and you rename boxing. <laughs> but the key is by doing that, we're not setting you up for another migration problem in the future. 
Yeah. We're allowing you to say, start saying array list event now, and then at some time in the future, we turn the magic performance knob, everything gets specialized, and the existing code just runs faster. And when you, talk, when you say some things like you just said, like, well, and then everybody's going to complain about X, Y, Z, one could almost think uh, that you occasionally get a lot of negative flag, and you always get that from, but always from different groups, right? Like, it's always, as I said, like, it's different decisions to be made. And it's not, well, I guess there are always some people who are always complaining, but I think it's more than, you know, people are complaining about what what they would have preferred, that that's not what happened actually. So. Right. <laughs> And, you know, in any large community, you know, you have people at both ends of the spectrum who say, um, you know, this is moving fast. This is moving too slow. You did too much. You didn't do enough. Yeah. Right. You know, um, you know, uh, in, uh, you know in, 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 in politics, there's always people who say this guy is too liberal. No, he's too conservative. He's not liberal enough. You, you can't make everybody happy and you don't try. Right. Yeah. But what you try to do is understand what kind of pain people are in and provide a, a valid way out of that pain, even if it wouldn't be their first choice. Yeah. So, um, uh, by the way, if people hear m m motorcycle noises, there's some dude down the street who apparently doesn't know how to, you know, take off. He's just like turning uh, the, no turning the, uh, the handle in while standing. <laughs> well, that's because you've got his hat. Yeah, that's what, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> like he's looking for that still. I actually got his glasses down here too, but I'm not going to put that on those up. Um, Right, so uh, what was I was trying? I was going to ask a question. Oh yeah, right. So um, with Jet four hundred one, four hundred two, and four XX, the other one that you just mentioned, I was just going to hope it's not going to bump into the five range. So there. No, no, no. It, it, it's it's pretty far along. It just it doesn't have a number yet, but it's in draft. It's public. It's just you know um, the the life cycle of a Jet is it starts out in a draft and people discuss it as draft and that could go on for months. You know yeah. before we feel comfortable enough to say, okay, it's a candidate. Yeah. And um, so, but what does that mean on, on the implementation side? I mean, as I said, obviously you already know how you're going to implement those jabs. They're not like, well, let's see whether that's even going to work. Um, but how much of the implementation work is, is already done? Or is it already a set thing like Jeb for one, Jeb for two? Okay, uh, maybe they're just in review mode and really you're already working on the next thing. So what, what when we talk about Valhalla, what is you and the team currently act actively working on? Yeah, so, 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 I mean, a lot of these things have had prototypes, but prototypes cut corners. And so, we, we you know, the, the purpose of the prototype is to prove that a given technique can actually work. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, uh, you know, very often, you know, we prove, well, this part works, but this part needs some help. And so we kind of tweak the rules and the design a little bit, and that perturbs the prototype, and it has to be, you know, taken apart and put back together. Um, and so, like, we're currently in a state of taking the prototype apart and putting it back together to follow the, you know, the rules outlined in these JEPs. And we're making pretty good progress on that. Uh, so we're hoping that in, you know, a month, two month time frame, you know, there will be a coherent implementation of the VM and the compiler where people can actually uh, write, you know, primitive classes and use them. And the, the, the generic stuff is probably farther away from that, maybe like, five, six months to where there's a good prototype of that. Um, and then assume, you know, and, and then like there's, we talked about like the role of streams in Lambda, which was to validate the, the language choices. We need to do some validation with libraries. Um, and in particular, we have to migrate some existing libraries um, and see, see how that works. And assuming that that all works as expected and doesn't create new surprises, then the attention will turn from how do we turn this from a prototype into a industrial strength, you know, ready to re ready to bet your company on it, you know, quality implementation. Okay, so that sounds to me like uh, these jabs getting targeted. Like if it happens next year, we're already quite fortunate. That's kind of how it sounds. Mm -hmm. Okay. Y yeah, I, I mean, I, I think like, you know, if if it were if it were a lot more than that, I'd be surprised. Yeah. But, you know, anything could happen, right? You know. Yeah, sure. Yeah. It's always important, right, for people out, out there who, li who listen. I already said that uh, during the recent conversations. Like, imagine there would be like a safe harbor slide here somewhere that said you can't, can't trust anything we say because, uh, well, you, right, everybody, are, we're all developers. We all know that this does not happen like, like clockwork in the future. Uh, well, we already think now, well, I think we're done in half a year. So in five months and 30 days, it's all done. That's not how this works. <laughs> but it also sounds to me, by the way, like out of the like of the three 
big projects. Well, Amber, actually, Amber is really, really interesting, but it's a little bit of a different thing because it has so many small deliverables. Well, the three big projects were Panama, Loom, and Valhalla, right? And all feels like they're in a similar state where they kind of are very far along. I think Panama may be more so, maybe Loom a little less so. Where that I think there is a potential 2023 where all of these three are, are, are done. And that will be like that will be a quite different Java from the one that we know yeah. now. Specifically, I mean not, not only, but specifically from the performance side, right? All of these things have, have semantic meaning as well. They offer new programming models, but all of them, all three of them have a strong performance component as well. They, they, they do. I mean, they all have a motivation that's that, that's based in performance, but they also have a, you know, improve the programming model as yeah. they go, right? So uh, Loom, you know, offers the opportunity not just to have uh, lightweight threads, but a uh, structured concurrency model, which is a lot easier to reason about. Um, you know, Panama makes, you know, um, not only, you know, offers better performance when accessing native data, but also is a much, it fits into the existing method handle model of computation that the VM already uses. And Valhalla, again, you know, not just about flattening data, but also about unifying the type system. Yeah. And everything is an object and generify over everything. So I, I think um, there's a certain amount of performance. There's a certain amount of, um, you know, fix the sins of the past um, and unify the programming model. So I, I but I, I think you're right. It's it's these have been coming for a long time. And it's interesting to see that they're all threatening to land at, you know, roughly similar times. And uh, whoever whoever is the air traffic controller for the uh, where they're landing is going to have some work to, you know. <laughs> Michael writes, my impression is that Valhalla is also much about stack versus heap because value types will be able to live on the stack by not escaping while identity types will often still escape and want to stay on the heap. Is my impression right or wrong that Valhalla is somehow also about utilizing the stack more and taking load from GC? So I, I would say that's half right. It's it, rather than saying allocating on the stack, I would just say not allocating on the heap, because ideally, when you don't allocate on the heap, uh, what you really want to do is not allocate at all and just hoist the fields into registers, mm -hmm. and um, and then all of the JIT optimizations, um, you know, about dead store elimination and all of that all work for you because you've, you've shredded the state of this object into independent variables, which you're then going to feed through the meat grinder. Um, and it, it, it's, you know, it, it, it's all going to optimize beautifully. Um, putting things on the stack is what you do when you don't have enough registers and you have to spill somewhere. Um, and so rather than the stack being the target, the stack is the fallback. The target is the registers, mm -hmm. and the stack is the fallback. So, um, you know, the stack allocation, uh, you know, I mean, C gave you a, a dangerous way to allocate on the stack with, you know, alloc A. Um, but that's, you know, th that, that's not, like I said, that's not actually the goal. But I, I, I think their intuition is largely correct, which is let's get these things off the heap. To, um, and let's get them in a place where the values are thread confined, so you don't have to worry about who else, you know, is, is this data aliased and who else is touching this? And, you know, is anybody depending on this thing, you know, where it is? And whether the JIT decides that that's registers or stack, that's, that's JIT bookkeeping. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. David Sims once mentioned that Java Util map cannot return null for missing entries anymore if a value type is used for the values of a map. Have you found a solution for that problem yet? Is, uh, is that in our yes. prototype or is that? Yes, we have. We have, there's actually several solutions for that. So, um, you know, so, so the, the, um, the design of Java Util map is actually a very good example of the, the, what I was talking about earlier about the original sin of primitives versus um, references and how generics doubled down on that division and said you can only generify over references and not over primitives. And that meant that there was a sentinel available uh, to, you know, to any type uh, that was a corresponding to a type variable. You may not know what T is, but you know null is always a member of its value set. And so the uh, map.get API takes advantage of that takes advantage, uh, which, you know, 
it is like even without all of this Valhalla stuff, it still sucks because what if the map allows null key, null values? Yeah, yeah. So now you call map.get and it says null, and you're like, okay, did that mean null like it was mapped to null or null meaning nobody's home? And you could call contains key, but now if you're in a concurrent situation, you're making two calls at two different times, yeah. the answer might change between them, so that's not so good either. So it was a questionable API design choice in the beginning, which now when you start to talk about types like int, of which null is not a member of their value set, this really falls apart. So, you know, this was one of the challenges we had about compatibly migrating generics. And this is one of the reasons why we have the reference projection and the value projection for a primitive class, which nobody likes and nobody wants. And, it, and you know, it, it, uh, the best we can do is to try to minimize the degree to which these dot ref and dot val types poke their heads up. <laughs> But this is one of the places where it pokes its head up that when we migrate map.get, um, it's going to return not a v, but a v.ref. Yeah. So, just... so you're saying whatever v was, it's returning the ref projection of that. The ref projection is always nullable. So the old semantics keep going. Yeah. Um, I have another answer, but, but you have a question. So No, actually, uh... I want just quickly to explain that about the dot ref and dot vel. So what that essentially means is we have an you can add basically these, I don't know what the name is, is a modifier, probably not, but you can add this term to a, to a type name and say, uh, for example, integer is basically int.ref because it's the reference type of int and int right. is basically integer.val because it's the value variant of, of integer. And so you have this way, in the future, int and integer only has two different type names because, you know, of the past. In the future, all your value types won't. They just have one type name. So the dot .val variant is always the value variant. The dot .ref variant is always the reference variant. And then usually for an inline class, just the blank type name will also be the value reference. So what you're saying right. is that then a map.get returns, so map.get nowadays returns just v, but then will return v.ref, thus telling the compiler and the reader of the code it, even if v used to be a value type, I will get back the reference projection of it. Or sorry, a primitive class. I will get back the, ref the reference projection of it because that's just that that's just how this works in this instance. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. And 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 so you know the the uh, the, the main difference. There's two there's two main differences between the value sets of the val projection and, and the reference projection. One is the reference projection always includes null. Mm -hmm. and the, the value projection never includes null. The more subtle difference is the values, the value set of the value projection are the direct instances, you know, like the int, you know, 0, 1, 2, 3, whereas the values, the value set of the reference projection are references to those values. Um, and it's a little bit like the difference between, you know, um, uh, T and star T and, 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 and C, but it, it, it's um, it's not anything that the user has to worry about quite as much as you do in C, because there are um, pretty pervasive conversions between them in Java. So the only time you really need to say it one way or the other is when you want a specific characteristic, like I want this to be nullable, I want this to be uh, pointer uh, pointer polymorphic, I want this to be non-flattened, etc. Yeah. Um, so so that is actually like a pretty simple answer. Is you say yeah, map.get doesn't return v, it returns v.ref. Yeah. And it erases to the same thing, and all the existing code works, uh, you know, the way it always did. I mean, that's that already, of course, um, we talked earlier about, you know, the JEP 402, which, or 401, which describes this and the complexity that entails. But then at least, like, that complexity is now more or less contained in understanding value types. And now you can just once, assuming that the developer has that understanding, you can just throw that fee that that concept then at map.get for example, and then map.get looks really simple. Well, you have to understand the right. other stuff before, but it's not hard to understand to understand now how map.get works. So that's that's good, I guess. And that was one of the big challenges was finding the right concepts, right? Uh, so you know, it took several years to distill down that what we really need to do is each primitive class come you know comes as a pair of types. And uh, we're used to that with int and integer, and it's the same way with point.ref and point.val. And most of the time, you just say the, the friendly name and everything's good. 
Um, but I want to give another answer to the what about map.get question, uh, because, you know, the answer I gave is kind of like a little bit of a jujitsu move, right? <laughs> I took an existing bad API and that was about to break and I like, you know, shift and dodged and now it doesn't break, but it's still as bad as it always was, <laughs> right? So, uh, you know, good news is existing API keeps working the same way it always did. Bad news is existing API keeps working the same as it always did. Um, and so the, the, the answer to that one is, well, map.get is really a pattern match. Ooh, what a cliffhanger. At this point, the conversation left Project Valhalla behind and got into pattern matching and Project Amber. Let me know in the comments if you're interested in that and I may end up uploading it as well. Other than that, do all the YouTube things and I'll see you in the next one. So long!